Hello everyone, and welcome to the third workshop of the quarter. In this video, we will teach an AI how to play a block render game using the Unity ML Agents framework. To follow along, please click on the GitHub link in the description and follow the instructions in the README file. The idea behind this workshop is that you will start with a working block render game that a human can play, and by the end, you will have an AI who has learned to play through reinforcement learning. Here's a little preview of the game. The player has the ability to move the blue cube left and right to avoid colliding with the white obstacles. Every time the player makes it through a set of obstacles, the score increases by one point. If the player collides with an obstacle, their score resets and the game starts over. There's technically no end to the game because obstacles are continuously generated. If you'd like to try out the game before we implement the AI, press the play button in the top middle of the Unity window. Once you're done playing, make sure you press the play button again. This is extremely important because any changes you make while the play button is blue will not be saved. As a final part of the setup, we need to install the ML Agents package in Unity. To do this, we can go to Window, select Package Manager, look at the packages in the Unity registry, search for ML Agents in the search bar, then press Install at the bottom. Now we're ready to start equipping our agent with the necessary tools to succeed in its environment. In the scene window on the left, click on the cube, then go to the right side of the screen, scroll down to the bottom and click add component and search for behavior parameters and then click on that. And then for a behavior name, you can just put cube. For vector observation size, the space size is going to be zero because we aren't going to be manually adding any observations to the vector of observations. Under vector action, the branch's size is going to be two because there are two possible actions that the agent can take. It can either move left or it can move right. And then for each individual branch size, we also want it to be two because left can take on two discrete values, true or false, and it's the same for right. Right can either be true or false, meaning the AI is currently moving left or it's not, or it's moving right or it's not. The behavior parameters component enabled our agent to move left and right. The agent also needs to be able to see what is in front of them so that they can react accordingly. To solve this, we can give our agent the gift of sight. To do this, we're going to add another component to our agent called the ray perception sensor. So we can go down to add component again and search for ray perception sensor, and we want to add the 3D version. Once we add it, we can change some of the values inside of it. These don't matter too much what they are specifically, but I found these values to work particularly well. So you can change the numbers of rays per direction to be two, max ray degrees to be 18, sphere cast radius to be zero, and ray length to be 50. Now we need to write some code to tie everything together. For this part, we need to go to the scripts folder under assets and double click the file named cube. The first thing we need to do is import a couple of libraries. Up at the top, we'll import the system library. And then at the bottom here, we'll import the ML agents library, which is unity.mlagents. And then we'll also add a variable, a public variable called onReset. And this will be used by the ML Agents framework to handle resets while it's training. We also need to adapt some of our functions to fit the framework of ML Agents. So the first function we need to change is the start function. Instead of just void start, it should be a public method, which is overridden from the base class. It returns void, and the name of it is initialized. And the contents of the function are the same, so we can leave that. And then we move on to update. Instead of update, it should be fixed update. And we're going to change our movement to be used by a different functions, so we can take out these movement checks. And instead, we're going to want to say request decision. The next two functions are required for the movement of the agent. 
the first of which is on action received, which is a public method that overrides the base class method. It has a void return value, and the name of the function is on action received. Its parameter is a floating point number, and the name of the parameter is vector action. And so inside this function, we're going to check if vector action of zero is equal to one, then that means we should be moving left. Because if you remember from earlier, we had the vector actions and the first option was the move left option and then the, the second one was the move right. So we're checking if move left is equal to true basically because it's equal to one then move left and since this is actually an array of floats it's probably safe safer to say math f dot floor to int so we're just converting it to a integer instead of comparing a float to an integer and we're going to do the same thing for the right side so we can copy this paste it and just change this to be position one and then change this move left to be move right. The second movement function enables us to still control the cube testing purposes. So this function is called heuristic and it's a public method. It overrides the base class method as a void return and its name is heuristic. It contains an array of floating point values called actions out. And we want to set the first action to be zero. So that would be, we're saying the, left, the value for left is zero. And then we also want to say the value for right is zero. And then now that we have the values initialized to zero, we can say if the key currently being pressed is the left key, then we want to move left. And set the actions out at that index to be one to indicate that we are moving. And then we're going to do the same thing for the right side. So if input.get key is uh, right key, then we're going to move right. And we're going to set the actions out at index one to be one. The move left and move right functions are okay as they are since we're using them in the same way. For the reset function, we do actually need to add one line to it. And that's going to be on reset dot invoke. This is going to allow the ML agents framework to use our reset method whenever it's resetting an episode. Along with this function, we need to tell the computer what to do when we start a new episode or a training session. So we can say public ride void on episode begin. So this will be called every time an episode starts. And inside of it, all we have to do is call reset. Before we write the final code, because there's only a little bit left, I'm going to quickly go over reinforcement learning, since that's what ML agents uses to enable agents to behave intelligently. Reinforcement learning is a machine learning technique that enables an agent to learn how to act through trial and error. The agent evaluates the current state that it is in, takes an action, and then receives feedback from the environment. There are two types of feedback that the agent may receive. The first is positive feedback, which we can view as a reward. The second is negative feedback, which we can view as a punishment. The ultimate goal of reinforcement learning is to define the best sequence of decisions that allow the agent to solve a problem while maximizing a long-term reward. The next two functions that we're going to code are implementations of the ideas that we just saw in the last slide on reinforcement learning. So the first function is on collision enter. This function is going to check if we collide into something, we're going to check is that object an obstacle? and an obstacle is the, the white blocks that you try to avoid when you're playing the blue cube. So if you collide with one of those, then that is bad because it means you lose. 
So we're going to increment negative one. So we're adding a negative one punishment to the AI. And instead of calling reset, we're going to call end episode because that's the function that ML agents uses to reset. And the second function we're going to use is private void on trigger enter. And the reason this one's on trigger enter instead of on collision enter is that we're not checking if we collided with anything for this one. We're checking if we have passed through something. And the thing that we're checking if we've passed through is the gap in the wall. So we're going to say if the object that I have passed through is score, then we want to add a reward. Finally, we need to go to the top and change our cube to inherit from agent instead of mono behavior. At this point, we have implemented all necessary components for our AI and we are ready to be in training. To do this, we just need to type a few commands. The first command is going to be activate our virtual environment. With our virtual environment activated, we're going to type the mlagents-learn command and we're going to type force after it so that if we've already trained a model before, this is going to override it. Once we run this, we should see the Unity logo pop up and it'll say start training by pressing the play button in the Unity editor. Once we press the play button, our agent has officially begun training. At this point, you should leave Unity running for a while to give the agent time to learn. You can stop the training at any time by pressing the play button again in Unity or pressing control C in the command line. After the training is complete, you should see a directory listed at the bottom of the command line. Go to this directory in your file system and go to the PPO folder inside. Then go to cube.nn and drag this into Unity Editor. Now go to cube, scroll down to behavior parameters, and click and drag cube into the model. Once you do this, you're essentially putting a brain inside of the agent. Now all we have to do is press the play button at the top and give Unity a second to load. And now the agent should be playing the game using the model that we just trained. Remember, the longer you train the agent, the better it'll get at the game because it learns new strategies to solve the problems at hand. And with that, we have actually reached the conclusion of this workshop. If you guys have any questions, please ask them in our Discord as usual, and we'll see you in the next one.